you doing today? This is Cynthia Clark, your palm reading expert and love compatibility coach. And I am excited to talk about Chinese astrology today. Chinese astrology is actually uh, something that I've been interested in for forever. Um, I don't know if you believe in past lives, but I definitely feel like I was Chinese in a past life because <laughs> I love Chinese food. I love Chinese astrology. I'm, I've been interested in feng shui for a very long time, and I find the whole thing really fascinating. And um, especially because it can just help you in so many ways in your life. So today I just wanted to uh, give a little introduction to Chinese astrology. And I'm also going to be going over um, why it's important. So how it can help you, why it's important. Uh, we're going to be going over the directions for each of the animals and also the hours of each of the animals and, and what that means. And I'm also going to be touching on the feng shui uh, for 2020 for each animal. So uh, you're definitely not going to want to miss this uh, live stream. <laughs> okay, so um, by the way, I have a, a, a just a little story about it. Um, when I was young, when I was 15, I actually was dating my Chinese astrology opposite. And back then I didn't know anything about it, but it was, it was funny how we used to argue all the time. And I was like, huh, I wonder if, you know, everybody argues like this. <laughs> and it turns out that, uh, there was a reason why we were arguing. We were simply not compatible. We were not on the same page. So there really is something to that. And now that I'm married again, and I'm so happy with who I'm married to because I'm married to my Chinese astrology soulmate match. And I cannot tell you the difference because it, it just is like night and day. And so, you know, even if you're a little skeptical about this stuff, which maybe you are, there really is something to it. And if you start to understand this a little bit, this is ancient wisdom. It's been around, um, we, we actually don't know how long it's been around, <laughs> but um, I was doing a little research and we know for sure it's been around at least since the fifth century BC and uh, probably even all the way back to as far as 2150 BC. So this is truly ancient wisdom and it's something that shouldn't be simply ignored because um, there's actually millions of people who use it every single day uh, for their benefit including me and hopefully including you. Uh, so why not learn a little bit about it? So uh, so anyway, I want to talk a little bit about the, uh, there's different groupings, okay, that goes into uh, the Chinese animals. So first of all, it's based on the lunar calendar. So it's not based upon our Gregorian calendar. Um, the Chinese astrology is based on the lunar cycles. So we just had Chinese New Year uh, starting uh, this year, January 25th, and it changes every single year slightly based upon the lunar cycles. And we are in the year of the metal rat, which means that we're in a new cycle. Uh, the rat is the first animal in the Chinese animals. So there's 12 animals. And uh, so we're in the start of a new cycle. So if you're ready for something new to come into your life this year, well, you're in a good cycle for that. <laughs> so that's kind of exciting, right? So I wanted to um, just talk about the, the different groupings of the animals. Okay, now, by the way, if you do not know your Chinese animal, which could be the case, um, you can actually download my app uh, it's called Date Mate Oracle, and you can find out on my app. Okay, so it's uh, it's a free app. It's available on Android or iPhone. Okay, and there's also a ton of other great stuff in there as well. Uh, but yeah, so one thing I wanted to talk about is the the animals each belong to a different 
grouping. Okay. So we call these the affinity animals. Okay. So if, uh, if you're a rat, by the way, we, we could start with the rat, uh, you belong to the passionate grouping and your affinity. There's always three in each affinity grouping. So the rat, the monkey, and the dragon all belong to the passionate grouping. And what that means is they, you can sort of think of it as their lens. Okay. So each of the groupings has a different lens that they kind of look through. So I relate this actually to also to fingerprints because, um, we have different lenses that we look through based upon the type of fingerprints that we have. And there's also four basic types of fingerprints. And here we are in the Chinese system. We have four basic groupings. So it's kind of interesting how there's a little parallel. So if you're a rat, a monkey or a dragon, then you're going to be uh, passionate, definitely the most animated of all of these signs. And they just have a real gusto for life. Okay. Now we also have the independence. And if you're born in the year of the tiger, the horse or the dog, you belong to the independent grouping. And um, this is also really important to understand how these um, different Chinese animals um, in the personality, how you interact with other people. So the independence, they need their freedom more than any of the other uh, groupings. So uh, my brother, for example, is a horse and he is very independent, <laughs> which makes perfect sense. Um, but he's also married. So he, you know, he can make it work. And, and that's the, the neat thing too about astrology is if you're married um, or if you're seeing somebody and you know your compatibility, it helps so much just in understanding the other person. Uh, we've also got the peaceful or diplomat grouping, and this is going to belong if you are born in the year of the rabbit, the sheep, or the pig. So these three are the most gentle of all the signs. They're very um, soft-spoken. Uh, they don't like to um, have confrontations, things like that. They're just, they're the diplomats. And I know quite a few uh, people in those groupings and they're, they're just very nice people. <laughs> um, of course, this is when we're in balance, right? So we can also be out of balance uh, within our, um, within our own sign. So that's important to recognize as well. Are we being authentic or are we, you know, when we get stressed or frustrated, then we can be out of balance and then we might not be actually demonstrating some of the qualities that we could be. And then our last grouping is the intellectuals, which is the ox, the snake, and the rooster. So if you're born in any of these years, then you are going to be more focused on learning. Uh, you're going to be more curious than the average person. Uh, you want to share wisdom. You want to gather wisdom. And the, the intellectuals are always uh, seeking that and wanting to share it. So, uh, so these are the four different groupings. Okay. So the next thing I want to talk about, by the way, if you're just joining us, I'm Cynthia Clark, palm reading expert and love compatibility coach. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're talking about Chinese astrology, uh, which is to me just such a fascinating topic. So now I want to get into, uh, each of the different animals. We're going to talk about their direction, their feng shui for 2020, the year of the metal rat, and also their, uh, their time. Okay. So we have a Chinese astrology, by the way, is so complicated when you really dive into it. It, it looks really simple. Um, and if you study regular astrology, you know, the Western astrology, um, you, you will also understand this. <laughs> it gets incredibly complicated. Um, but that's kind of what I like about it. So 
um, palmistry is the same way. I love things that are just complicated and juicy and, and that you can, it's sort of like a rabbit hole. You can dive into it and then you realize that there's so much more to it. And the more you learn, the more you realize there's more to learn. <laughs> and, but you can also take a little piece of information and go, wow, that's really useful. I can use that. So that's what I'm trying to give you guys today. Um, I want you to be able to take a little piece of information, um, starting with, you know, know your animal and then know your grouping. And then um, I'm going to go through all 12 animals uh, fairly quickly so that we um, aren't here all day. <laughs> and you can understand actually what is going on with um, each of the animals for 2020. Okay, so we've got the rat which is of course the first one and the direction for the rat is north and in the north we've got um uh this year we've got the number three star which actually relates to um violence um well, not, not necessarily violence, but like quarrels and arguments. So you want to put, you want to keep your north sector this year pretty calm and quiet. And you want to bring in the fire element. So anything that's red or um, representing fire, red items are really good uh, to put in the north. Uh, the rat's time is 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. So we've got, uh, if you're a rat, you know, you always want to take care of your north sector. So this is how you use the feng shui. And you also want to, um, if there's something that you want to do, 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. is like your best time for like your creativity or inspiration or things like that. So um, you can think of your hours, like your, your personal hours as your strongest hours in your day. Um, so keep that in mind. Okay, uh, next up we've got the ox, which is northeast, is the ox direction. Um, we've got the number one star. Um, also the tiger shares this direction. So if you're an ox or a tiger, you've got the number one star, which is the victory star for this year, and the northeast direction. The ox's hours are 1 a.m. to 3 a.m. And the tiger's hours are 3 a.m. to 5 a.m. Okay, so the victory star, you want to enhance your north northeast direction with things that are representing victory or um, success. Okay, so I've got a really cool one on my desk in the northeast to me that represents uh, victory. Okay, so moving on, um, the rabbit occupies the east direction. And um, if you're a rabbit, your time is 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. And unfortunately, you've got the number five star in your chart this year, which uh, represents uh, what's called the Wu Wang, which is a, it's an unlucky star. So you want to put in the five elements in the east so things, something that represents the five elements, also like a pagoda can be a good cure for that. Um, I usually do crystals, which is the easiest way to uh, represent the five elements. So I'll do like a blue crystal for uh, water element. I'll do a brown crystal for earth element. I'll do a green crystal for wood element. And then I'll do a red crystal for fire element. And I'll do like a, a kind of a grayish colored crystal for the uh, metal element. So you could just do that. Put five of them in your east and you're good to go. Okay, especially if you're a rabbit. Okay, moving on to the dragon. We've got the dragon in the southeast. And also the snake is in the southeast. And this year we've got the number six star in your direction, which represents uh, heaven luck. So you wanna put um, things that represent heaven to you, or this could even be like stars or planets or you know anything celestial uh, can go in the number six uh, direct, uh, star. So in the Southeast, um, the dragon's hours are seven to 9 a.m. And the snake's hours are 9 to 11 a.m. 
Okay, then uh, we've got the horse is in the south. Okay, so this year the horse is occupying uh, the number two star, which is the illness star. So you definitely want to put in a feng shui cure for this. And I usually do like a, a medicine Buddha or I do like a, a little Wulu, um, which is uh, just this little thing that you stick up in that in that corner. And that would be uh, your time is 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. if you are the horse. Okay, so moving on to the southwest, uh, we've got the sheep and the monkey occupying the southwest. Uh, by the way, if you're a sheep or a monkey, you've got the romance luck for this year in 2020 because the number four star is in your direction. So, um, Definitely, if you're looking for love or if you're looking to enhance your love life this year, if you're a sheep or a monkey, you've got the most luck in 2020. And uh, so you want to enhance, of course, the Southwest with anything that represents love. Uh, by the way, the number four star can also be scholastic achievement. So it's good for students as well, um, interestingly enough. And uh, the sheep's time is 1 to 3 p.m. And the monkey's time is 3 to 5 p.m. Okay, so moving on, we've got the rooster in the direction of west. And uh, we've got the number nine star occupying the west this year. And the number nine star represents uh, future prosperity. So the rooster has a lot of opportunity this year to make money, especially in a big long-term project that maybe won't be completed this year. So uh, your best time is 5 to 7 p.m. And uh, you, anybody can enhance the West uh, with prosperity items or future prosperity items, whatever that represents for you. And lastly, we've got the dog and the pig occupying the northwest directions. And uh, the dog is 7 to 9 p.m. And the pig is 9 to 11 p.m. And uh, these two animals um, have the number eight star in their corner for this year, 2020, which is the prosperity star. So uh, the rooster, which has future prosperity, which is almost as good, um, the dog and the pig have the number eight prosperity star. So you definitely want to put wealth items in your northwest direction uh, because that's going to enhance your wealth luck for this year. So by the way, um, in the center of the chart, we've got the number seven star, which is a violence and quarrelsome star. So you want to make sure you calm that down and put it in the direction of um, you, you want to put items that, that will calm it down, which would be blue, blue or black items in the center of your home. Um, another really good cure, and this is actually one that I went ahead and just made sure I had a blue rhinoceros and a blue elephant, which is kind of a funny cure, but it works. <laughs> um, you could also put water features or something in the center of your home. That'd be another way to do it. Or blue crystals. Um, there's lots of things you can that can satisfy the um, number seven and appeasing the number seven, which we want to do. So um, I hope you enjoyed today's uh, lesson on Chinese astrology. And, and by the way, if you want to learn more, like I said, if you want to learn more about Chinese astrology, uh, you can go to loveinyourhands.com and just sign up for my uh, free Align to Your Soulmate challenge. It's a five-day challenge, and it helps you to... Um, you're going to learn a, lot, a whole bunch of stuff, but one of the things you're going to learn about is Chinese astrology. You're going to learn about the traits of each of the animals, and you're also going to learn about the soulmate matches and the best matches for each of the Chinese animals. So that's another beautiful thing that you can learn from Chinese astrology. It's so much fun. So I encourage you to do that. And uh, you'll learn a ton of other stuff too in the challenge and you'll you'll really see some benefit uh, just in five days 
I promise. <laughs> so um, thank you so much for uh, watching and, and or listening if you're listening to the podcast uh, later on. And uh, this is Cynthia Clark. And remember to live life with love and have a wonderful day, everyone.